Hi, Dr. Alex here, and welcome to a video on making a sofa bed out of entirely recycled timber. Now, this is a little outside my normal comfort zone on more than one ground, because my technical videos that normally end up in this series are usually about computer-based things, most often about messing with my Lenovo ThinkPads of various types and making them as fast as possible and getting them to do things that they shouldn't be able to do. Uh, the next video I make will be on getting my T420, which I killed and then resurrected, to do something it was never supposed to do. But enough of that. The point of this video is about making a new sofa bed because I've had a sofa bed for some time in our study and use it for making a lot of videos. Again, this is the other reason I'm slightly out of my comfort zone for this video because in this series of practical videos, I don't normally have my ugly mug or face on screen. But unfortunately, because of the ways this sofa bed gets used in my other video series and the old sofa bed was used in other video series, and to demonstrate the sofa bed in final action, I'll have to put myself on screen. Again, as I say, I don't like putting my face on screen for no good reason at all. I leave that to elements of the TikTok generation. No, I would rather not have my face on screen if I'm doing a technical video like this, a practical video. But to demonstrate the sofa bed in action, I'm going to have to get myself on screen. So that's going to be at the end. The audio quality will probably drop a little bit uh, because I'm probably going to use the audio straight off the camera for that bit. But for most of it, recording my nice Shure microphone, as I normally do, with lots of nice audio editing done afterwards on my amazing Lenovo laptops. So, why did I build a sofa bed out of recycled timber? Well, first of all, I needed a better sofa bed. The sofa has been used, as I said, for various series they've already produced, where I've had to speak to camera, both creative writing-based video series, like The Doctor, season 13 and 14, which is currently in production, have had all the narration and certain character pieces read from the old sofa bed by me and my helpful editor, from, at least in the case of me and the editor, from the sofa bed here, and it's done a fair job, but it's a bit saggy and not very firm. It takes a lot of fiddling to get it nice and flat, and it's just not ideal. In addition, when folded out as a bed, it is not very comfortable, and it just failed to satisfy both as a sofa and a bed. Hence me deciding to make a sofa bed from scratch out of recycled timber. Next, you may ask, why make it yourself? Well, um... This has not been a very expensive project, in terms of money anyway. I mean, I've put a bit of time into making this thing, but it did not cost very much. The most expensive item I have bought new, I mean, I had bought things that I owned and used in this in the past, but the one new thing I had to buy to build this sofa bed was a box of 100 screws from Homebase. Shout out to Homebase, thank you for your cheap screws. Uh, but they were quite cheap, it was £6.50 for 100 screws. And they have done the job, more than done the job. I have many left over for whatever I do next to them. But the primary resource has been recycled timber from all over London. Now you might think, how is there so much timber spread about over London, ready to pick up from the floor as it turns out? Well, as always, the property market is quite healthy and vigorous in London. And as a consequence, there are sold signs, let by signs and other signs from the property market left strewn all over London, usually chucked into hedges or chucked down the back of walls or just chucked into the street. So there are many of these to be had. I would say it took about 20 sold to let signs discarded for me to be able to build the bed, more or less. I may be out by a little bit. You might need to use a few more or a few less if you're a bit more frugal and strategic with your use of wooden two by two posts. Uh, that's two inch by two inch. I never use inches usually because I'm a scientist and I've been, we used metric in this country since before I was born. And yet when it comes to the size of the wooden posts, I'm suddenly forced back into imperial units. How weird is that? Anyway, it took about 20 of those gleaned off the streets. Obviously, it took a while to acquire and it took a while to put this together, but that was probably the most labor-intensive part of getting materials to use for the sofa bed. Other things that I had to use, uh, yeah, the equipment you'll require, on top of the 20 posts you acquire from the street, are the aforementioned screws, screwdriver, tape measure, my vintage saw, hand saw, very old, works, adjustable wrench, and electric drill. And that is all. So the first part of the sofa bed I put together was the frame for the bed, essentially. So the two sides and the two ends of the very outer part of the bed itself. 
once those were in place, the next thing I did, you might find this weird, but this is what I did, is I put the legs on it. Uh, the legs actually give a bit of structure and support to the whole rectangular frame, so they were useful for that. Then the next thing I did was start adding in the seat slats, which again, you might find an odd thing to do, but it gave extra rigidity to the whole structure while not making it too heavy, because all of the stuff I've said so far, I did in the garden, and then I carried the entire sofa bed as it was, with the rectangular frame, the legs, the cross beams on the legs for some bits, and the slats, which form most of the cross beams on the head end legs at least. That bit I carried up then into the study in my second floor flat, which made it easier to carry at least, because then once all the rest of it's added, it gets a lot heavier. But still light enough to move, as you'll find out in my demo. Once the sofa bed was in the study, it was actually complete enough for me to actually lie on the sofa part of it, or sit on the sofa part of it, to test it actually worked properly as a sofa. In fact, I'd kind of done that in the garden before I moved it up. But even with only the frontmost seat slats in place, I could still sit on it, I could still test it, I could even lie on it. And it was very nice to have a sofa where I could lie on it without worrying about the thing sagging into the floor or around me and me disappearing, which the old sofa bed kind of had a tendency to do. I then finished the bed section of the sofa bed entirely. There's even a couple of weird hooks on there for the blue screen to slot into, the original blue screen to slot into when it comes down. That's the thing I'm least satisfied is those hooks. I might remove them at some point. They do the job, as you can see here. But it turns out, because I put a new blue screen on the back of the bed section of the sofa bed, I probably don't need to use the old blue screen anymore anyway, probably, because the new blue screen attached to the sofa bed actually does a better job. As I said, some of the reasons for making this sofa bed was to make recording some of the other series I do where my ugly mug is on screen a little bit easier. And this new blue screen at the back of this new sofa bed actually should make some of the filming easier to do. Once the bed section was all in place, as it was, uh, very quickly, because there's only two more slats to put in, I then started putting in the slats for the bed itself. When I got to halfway across, I put the central one in first, then I put the leftmost three slats into that side to test it, because I wanted to make sure I put the spacing narrow enough that I wouldn't fall through, or anyone else wouldn't fall through the bed. I was a bit worried because I was doing slightly wider than the actual slat widths as the gap. So I didn't know if that was going to work or not, so I did three on one side only, and then I could lie on it straight away, which, even without the matches, I could just lie straight on the slats, and I figured out at that point, yeah, the spacing's fine as it is. With the mattress in place, it's even nicer. And then also, I ran the mattress down on the three slats only. And yeah, you could tell immediately that's going to be more than enough wood versus space to make a comfortable, stable bed. Okay, <laughs> mustn't go to the side that Nala is currently sitting on because that's not supported at all. But this is absolutely perfect. This works perfectly. I, yeah, it supports the mattress. It's all good. Amazing. Where's she gone? I wonder where she's gone now. After that, put all the rest of the bed slats in, and that was the sofa bed complete. So that's all I need to talk about now, really, because I've done all I can say possibly about building the bed. But it doesn't have to be perfect. You will notice it's not perfect. I did clean a lot of the slats roughly before putting it together. I might clean it again at some point, and I might even paint it at some point to make it look even better. But it's not perfect. There are gaps in places I'd rather not have them, and the two hooks for the long blue screen are not ideal. But they work, and that's really all that matters as far as I'm concerned. The bed is good and stable and comfortable, perhaps the most important thing, as is the sofa. Now I'm going to have to put my ugly mug on screen uh, in a non-reading creative fiction to camera context, which is not what I'm really comfortable with, or I suppose doing science documentaries the other time I actually put my ugly mug on screen, or doing science documentary discussions. But this is one of those times I really would not normally put my face on the screen because it's a practical video, a technical video if you like, which doesn't require my face except I'm going to have to demo the bed. So here we go, a drop in audio quality and my ugly mug to boot. Okay, there's not much room to film in here with me moving the bed around anyway. I'm standing up and I'm barely on camera, I can tell. Uh, barely fitting. So an added bonus is that there'll be less of me on screen as I move around because you won't be able to see me. But as you can probably tell, the sofa bed is currently in its sofa configuration. I've thrown the two pillows onto the actual sofa part of the sofa bed uh, because they form the cushions when it's in use uh, as a sofa. I don't know if you'll still see me on screen because there's so little room uh, on screen anyway. But I can lie on the sofa bed quite happily, which is something I couldn't really do with the old sofa bed made out of 
squidgy, cushiony things folded together. Uh, so yeah, it works well for that. Um, obviously, I can sit on the sofa bed easily, particularly nicely in the middle there for filming to camera. When, of course, I'll have the blue screen rolled down to make that backdrops more easy for those particular videos. I'll probably move the cushions around slightly when I'm filming. So I've got one flat and one up. In fact, let's see, let's see if that works. I don't know how much of this you can see, but yeah, I'll probably use it like that blue screen behind me. My head's well below the top of the blue screen, that's good. Uh, I can sit on this bit, my legs folded, reading as I often do, and the blue screen will be there. I can mask off the bits to the edges and above, and I'm still in the blue screen. As I wave my hands around, I'll look back at this and see if I can actually stay in the thing. I'm in the middle, roughly in the middle, I might move slightly that way. But yeah, I can read. Hopefully my feet are still in shot, but even if they're not, I can mask bits quite easily. Yeah, that's how it's going to work for filming and talking to camera and having things uh, on screen with weird stuff behind me. Now let's see how turning it from a sofa to a bed works. So obviously I'm taking off, if I'm going to keep this in the video I don't know, but I might. So I'm taking off the cover, so I'm going to put it somewhere more carefully. And taking off the pillows, which again I might put somewhere more carefully in the future, but for now, for speed, I'm just going to put them down on the floor over here. Point, point, point. So, uh, roll up the blue screen. Don't need that one doing this. Perfect. Blue screen rolled up. Okay, so now you can see I'm well off camera, I'd imagine by now. Hello. Well off uh, camera is probably a good thing. You can see the sofa is ready to fold down. Let's see how we do it. Um, I normally flip the mattress over at some point because this is the nice side and that's what I want to lie on. So I'm going to move this back. There should be enough play now for me to rotate the thing. And I might try and keep the mattress in, in, in contact as I do it. I can always shuffle it afterwards. At this point, I want to move it away from me a bit. There we go. Give some more space, yay! And it's down. Now the sofa mattress oof, on top, which gives you a little bit more space. Okay, wee! Pull that over. I'm gonna put that back on in a second. And I can either leave it all the way out where it is now, or I could move it back to the wall. <laughs> Just the hell it, let's move it back to the wall. Give me a bit more space at the bottom of the bed. And there you go, that's the sofa bed. I'm going to be horribly close to the screen there. Sofa bed's out, and it is, ah, uh, oh, it is so stable, and it's so comfortable. <laughs> I cannot really, oh my goodness, this is so nice. I could just stay here. I think I might just stay here. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a sofa bed from recycled timber, which if you're living in the right place, you'll have just the right type of recycled timber because the property world do seem to leave them all over the place in certain cities. I guess if you live in the countryside, you may only have real timber around you, which means you might be in a disadvantage because they won't be nicely square cross section like these ones. Anyway, I hope this video is useful to someone somewhere. I hope it may be inspirational because you can get a sofa bed for £6.50 if you include the price of the screws, as I just did. But beyond that, that's free material. And this sofa bed, yeah, it's moving very slightly as I attempt to make it move, but it's really stable. Roll, roll, roll. Ah and comfortable. I really cannot emphasize enough. This is so much more comfortable than the paid for fold out sofa beddy cushiony thing we had before. I could quite happily stay here. And on that note, thank you for joining me for this 
all my subscribers, watchers, listeners. And until the next video, whatever that may be, take care. Ugh. Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal. Or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, masters, mistresses.